الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم يطاع فيشكر ويعصى فيتجاوز ويغفر القلوب له مفضية والسر عنده علانية سبحانه وتعالى عما يشركون وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله نشهد أنه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Dear brothers and sisters You know Musa alayhi salam after what happened with Bani Israel with him he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very special dua in surah al-a'raf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Musa saying in the Quran qala rabbi law shi'ta ahlaktahum min qablu wa iyyay atuhlikuna bima fa'ala as-sufaa'u minna إن هي إلا فتنتك تضل بها من تشاء وتهدي بها من تشاء أنت ولينا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الغافرين واكتب لنا في هذه الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة إنا هدنا إليك موسى is asking Allah سبحانه وتعالى for forgiveness and to give him the best of this life and the forgiveness in the hereafter for everybody what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, or answer him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَ عَذَابِي أُصِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ أَشَاءَ وَرَحْمَتِي وَسَعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Allah is telling him that his mercy, it will contain everything in the earth. In this life, rahmatullah, the mercy of Allah for everybody. For Muslim, non-Muslims, animals, disbelievers, anybody will have something of rahmatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the end of the day, in Jannah, in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give his mercy to some specific people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them in Surah Al-A'raf also, telling Musa and telling our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about those people. He said, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ والذين هم بآياتنا يؤمنون. Three things. And then, الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي الذي يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم في التوراة والإنجيل يأمرهم بالمعروف وينهاهم عن المنكر ويحل لهم الطيبات ويحرم عليهم الخبائث ويضع عنهم إصرهم والأغلال التي كانت عليهم. فالذين آمنوا به وعزروه ونصروه واتبعوا النور الذي أنزل معه أولئك هم المفلحون This is أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم This is ourself This is our everybody here today If you follow the prophet the, the way of the prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم A lot of people try to follow the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in his appearance try to wear, to wear jilbab to have a beer to have a nice looking like the Prophet ﷺ used to have, long hair maybe. But what amazed everybody about our Prophet ﷺ, it was his character ﷺ, not his appearance. Because the Prophet ﷺ used to wear the same clothes as Abu Jahl and Abu Sufyan and everybody else. I know we have an Islamic code, but still, the same person used to 
do the jilbab of other people, the kuffar, who used to do the same thing with the muslimin. But the, the, the important thing is, is the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa How he dealt with the people. And this is the main thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But you have to follow the Prophet first in priorities. How to deal with the people. How to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't make any association with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first thing. And if you look more deeper in the Quran and the Islam and our Iman, our religion, it is two parts. One part is the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to believe in Him and to thank Him and to be grateful to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other part with the people. So we have line coming from up and line going forward with the people. A lot of people, they have this part. They have the connection with Allah. But dealing with the people, it's zero. You know, maybe you, 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 you pray in the first line or the second or you come every time. But you still, you get angry very fast. You, you know, you, you, ju- you get jealous from other people. You talk about the other people. You have a lot of bad things. And we need to reform our iman again. Follow the sunnah of, of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa really as he wants us to do. To know that, look at Surah Al-An'am. Surah Al-An'am revealed to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in one shot, in one night. It was in Mecca. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the Tawheed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what you have to do, what's your priority? What's your priority in Islam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the surah, surah, he concludes everything he wants from us. And he said to, Prophet, to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi قُلْ تَعَالَوْ أَتْلُ مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ Because, as you know, our Prophet used to be in Quraysh, in Mecca. And people of Mecca used to be the people of religion. They follow, they claim that they follow Ibrahim alayhi salam. They used to have a special clothes, special appearance, a special uh, requirement for their hajj. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they have special things for even to eat, for the food. They used to slaughter by a specific way. They used to have this is haram and this is haram by themselves. Because they, follow, they said or they claim that they follow the sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them during all the surah about you know how to eat about, you know, what is your priority? And, you know, I heard the story that a woman came to a group of people and she asked, who's the most faqih among you? And they appointed to somebody. And she asked him, how did you eat according to the sunnah of the Prophet? And how did you sleep? How do you sleep according to the sunnah? And he said, when I eat, I say bismillah, and I eat in front of me, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, have like not full stomach and uh, that's it and when I sleep I make wudu I sleep on my right side I do my adhkar and then I sleep it's perfect looks like it's following the prophet but she told him two things you have the adab of the eat to eat and the adab to sleep but you don't have the core of the adab the core of the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And she told him, eat from halal and eat how you eat. It doesn't matter how you eat, where you eat, or what kind of food you eat. But eat from halal. This is the main thing. The, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas came to him, and he told him, Ya, ya Rasulullah, udu Allah an akuna, an akuna mustajab al-da'wa. He would like to be, you know, when he asks Allah for anything, Allah will answer his dua. But the Prophet ﷺ told him, Ya Sa'd, atib ma ta'amaka, takun mustajab al-da'wa. Eat from halal. That's it. Allah will answer your prayer. And then she told him, to the other question, before you sleep, purify your heart from anybody, from humans, and do you have the and the, you know sleep whatever you, you like to sleep in your right your left anywhere it doesn't matter, but how is your heart? How how do you purify your heart? As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, even one person, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him this man, 
He's from the people of Jannah. He came in the, in the, in the message of the Prophet, and the Prophet said, this man is from the people of Jannah. And you know the story, Abdullah ibn Umar, he go to his home and stay with him three days, he doesn't do anything. Just pray five times like we do. Maybe he's, you know, he wake up before Fajr, make two raka, read some Quran, and sleep as we sleep. And he did ask him after the end of the three days, he said, the only thing I think I do more than anyone else, when I sleep, I forgive everybody. That's why the Prophet ﷺ told him, this is from Ahlul Jannah. Not because he sleep in his right or he did the askar before, or did purify your heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us and the Prophet and everybody in Surah Al-An'am about your priorities. قُلْ تَعَالَوْ أَتْلُ مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ Number one, أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Don't associate anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you seek help, seek it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you seek anything, just ask Allah. If you fear, fear from Allah. Try to, try to depend on somebody, depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tushriku bihi shay'an. Second, wabil walidayni ihsana. Be kind to your parents. Second thing, you know, we, 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 we worship Allah, we remember Allah, we seek help with Allah because He gave us life, He gave us everything in this earth. So we'll be grateful to him to worship him. Same thing with your parents. They are the direct reason for you to be here today. The direct reason for you to read and know your religion, your parents. That's why Allah make it after him directly. Be kind to your parents. Call your parents by phone if they're not here. Make dua for them if they're if they, if they, if they dead. You know, remember them in your du'a every day. Because they, they, if you don't do that, you are not grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if you don't take care of your parents, you are not going to take care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَلَّا تُشْرُكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاقٍ نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ Don't worry about your rizq. Allah assure you about your rizq. Take care of your Islam. Take, take care of your, you know, dealing with the people in a good way. Try to be close to the, to the Sunnah of the Prophet You know, I know you do your best to gain money and to work hard. But depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah already has written your rizq. نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ You know, we remember wasiyah when somebody is dying. If we hear the kalimat wasiyah, we remember the dying person. Some, someone will leave or something and then he will give you the important things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the important things in our religion. He said, ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ Who's وَصَّاكُمْ? Allah is give you the wasiyah, the important things. These four things. أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا لَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاقٍ لَا تَقْرَبُوا الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Five things. And then in the other ayah. For these two ayat, Ibn Abbas said, this is the muhkamat from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ This is the muhkamat of the Quran. It's very clear. And the Ka'b al-Ahbar, the Jewish man that he became a Muslim with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sahabi, he said, this is the beginning of the Torah. At Torah used to start by those. This is the wasiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَا لَلْيَتِيمِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ حَتَّى يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّ وَأَوْفُ الْكَيْلَ وَالْمِيزَانَ بِالْقِسْطِ لَا نُكَلِّفُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا أُسْعَهَا وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَاعْدِلُوا وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَ وَبِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ أَوْفُ ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ Again, this is the wasiyah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about two ayat وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ 
ذلكم وصاكم به لعلكم تتقون الله سبحانه وتعالى is saying to our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Oh Muhammad come I will recite what your Lord has prohibited you, you from do you not anything in worshiping with him سبحانه وتعالى be good and kind to your parents kill not your children because of poverty we provide sustain sustenance for you and for them. Come not near to the fawahish, shameful sins, illegal things, whether committed openly or secretly, and kill not anyone whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, except for, for a just cause, according to the Islamic law or the legal way, the justice system. You that you may understand the, your religion then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that you have to be just ولا تقربوا مال اليتيم إلا بالتي أحسن حتى يبلغ أشد وأوفوا الكيل والميزان بالقسط لا نكلف نفسا إلا وسعا وإذا قلتم فعدلوا justice even when you speak when you have a speech when you say things say it by just وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ If you make hukm or just, if you make judgment between two people, make justice. Do by just. Even though against your relative, your parents, your brother, your sisters, be just. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be just. وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَعْدِلُوا وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَى وَبِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ أَوْفُوا And then be fulfill the commitment that you have as Muslim with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You remember the relationship with Allah? Then fulfill what, whatever your iman and the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling you have to do. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا. All praise you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that no God but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and his family and his companion and whoever will follow his footsteps until the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, again, we have to give some attention or pay some attention to the application of the Quran, application of the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When somebody came to Aisha radiallahu anhu, anha, Umm al muminin his wife, and he asked her about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa how he used to be. She didn't tell him, you know, how long his, his beard is, how long his hair is, what kind of clothes he wear, but she told him, كَانَ قُرْآنًا يَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ He used to be a Quran walking in the earth in front of the people, applying the Quran in his life in all his, his, his as, aspect. And when you read the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu in different occasions, he always ask people to do good. When somebody, a man, came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he did ask him, Ya Rasulullah, awsini, advise me. And the Prophet Sallallahu told him, don't be angry. And he said, give me another wasiya, advise me again. And he told him, don't be angry. And he said, give me another, another advice. And he told them, don't be angry. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aw kama qal. The Prophet sallallahu knew that anger is something you can't treat it. You know how many friends, how many occasions that you lost somebody because of your anger. Because you just act very fast. You don't have patience. That's why you have to exercise to control ourselves to control our emotional things, to control our anger. You know, today, nowadays, they have schools and workshops for you to control your anger. And the Prophet from 1400 years, telling one of his companions for himself to advise him, don't be angry. Because anger will make you commit sins. A shaitan will be close to you when you are angry. 
You're going to lose your brother and sister, your wife, your children, your job sometimes because of your anger. So try to exercise. This is the wasiyah of the Prophet Sallallahu To be patient, to exercise, not to be angry. And the other man came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he asked him about something. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, لا يؤمن لا يؤمن أحدكم He said, من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكن خيرا أو ليصمت One of the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said, whoever believe in Allah and in the after He say, good speech or good talk or just keep your, keep your tongue or keep your mouth silent, don't talk Think before you speak because word, if the word came out from your mouth, you cannot control it. But if it's still there, you still have the control. And the Prophet ﷺ telling his, his companion about the word. You know, we get married by word. And we get divorced by word. We enter Islam by word. La ilaha illallah. And we leave Islam also by word. We say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, you are Muslim. Shahada. That, that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, um, some of you will say a word, he will go in the hellfire, 70 years in the hellfire. And some of you will say a good word, Allah will raise him levels in the paradise. And Mu'adh ibn Jabal telling the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, Allah will hold us accountable by our speech, our talking. And he said, Thakalatka ummuka ya Mu'adh. وَهَلْ يُكَبُّ النَّاسُ فِي النَّارِ عَلَى وَجُوهِهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِلَتِهِمْ He telling Mu'az radiallahu anhu that a lot of people will go to hellfire because of the result of their speech. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make our speech with us to go to the paradise and to be away from the hellfire. نسأل الله عز وجل أن يغفر لنا الأجمعين ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا ثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا عسيرا إلا يسرته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك رضا ولنا فيها صلاح إلا قضيتها ويسرتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اجعلنا من متبعين لسنة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اجعل القرآن حجة لنا لا علينا اللهم اجعل القرآن حجة لنا لا علينا اللهم اجعل القرآن حجة لنا لا علينا اللهم ولا تتوفنا إلا وأنت راد عنا اللهم لا تتوفنا إلا وأنت راد عنا اللهم لا تتوفنا إلا وأنت راد عنا اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا